Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this very, very cold uh, wintry morning. Uh, a little bit of snow on the ground, just a light, very light dusting in the air, but it is about minus two in the old mixed mo shop today. So uh, I've got the heating on, haven't long been down here, so it's got to warm up just as of yet. Today we're going to be looking at the McCulloch um, lawnmower that came in as part of a job lot. Uh, it runs absolutely fine, however there are a few little niggly bits with it, um, and that is the throttle control doesn't work, and I'm convinced that's something to do with a carburetor. I've had that before where the throttle control doesn't actually idle down. It will go on to choke, um, but you know what it's like when you come to sell these little bits and pieces, and um, people always ask, oh, why doesn't the throttle work and what have you. So it was a bit of a tidy up, a bit of a going over. Originally I bought this bit of kit off a gentleman, he said it revs its head off. Um, but I'm not seeing that. Um, so that's why I need to do a bit of investigation work on it. So it's, it's a little bit of a tinkering video more than a repair video. I just want to see what's going on with it, see if we can't get that throttle to actually work and do what it should do. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mows, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or two, I'm on my satellite wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's have a look at this little McCulloch lawnmower that seems to work, but wants a bit of tinkering. Right, so here it is, a um, little McCulloch with an RV150 engine on it. I did put some fuel in it just the other day. And let's just double check it. Okay, so it's actually got no fuel in it at all now and there's remnants of uh, something that's come out here. So it has actually got a fuel leak or something going on. Um, so that might be the reason why it was revving its head off earlier on, but there's no fuel in it now. So actually it is a bit of a repair because if someone bought this machine, um, they'd fill it up with petrol and by the next time I go and use it in a week's time um, there'd be no fuel in this machine and it'd be leaking fuel out the top so it is actually a problem with the machine we'll take the air filter box off and uh, I'm going to go straight into the carburetor because obviously that's where it's leaking from it's leaking from the carburetor at some point what I also want to do is get some WD-40 as well um, just to put on that deck just to give it a bit of a bit of a shine just to get some of, it, some of this fuel off um, so we, we can we can sell it a bit uh, a bit easier. So let me grab a um, let's grab a Torx a uh, a Dewalt with a ten mil. These have got ten mils on them. There's a deep wall ten mil. What I do? It is absolutely bitter. Little tiny bolt there one there there should be a third there but that's missing the carburetor is just actually falling off in my hand okay what's that bit of sink put it down to one side <clears throat> so this should have an lhp 16 carburetor on it the gasket is not too bad although the gasket does look to be around the wrong way we'll get to that a bit later on um so off the bat everything seems to be where it should be let me just adjust that throttle, just to see it all move. Yeah, it's all moving. And it will actually choke to a degree. It's not on full choke, but uh, it does actually move. So that's good. However, it's, it's just not running right and it's got the fuel leak. So let's remove that little tiny arm off of there. Don't lose that, Mick. And I've got a little tiny fuel line there as well to move. Let's take that off. I was watching, whose video was I watching just the other day? Um, Eliminator Performance, he was on about a, um, a fuel uh, a fuel re pipe removal tool, uh, to how to make one. So one thing you got to look out for on here is this little tiny spring on here to make sure they're all in place, so the choke's in place and the throttle one actually is not. See that? That throttle won't return. And it won't return because this little tiny leg needs to be around the other side. Let me just move it around there out of the way. Where's it gone? There it is. There it goes. So now, look at that. That's all it was. The little tiny throttle leg has just um, come around the other side. That's all it is. So that throttle was stuck. So let me just show you. There's a little tiny lead just there off this spring up against this post. And that was around the other side. And that wasn't allowing that, that little tiny um, spring to come back on itself. Now the carb's off, I'm just going to have a quick inspection inside the carb, see what it looks like. It was running absolutely fine, so I'm not really um, looking to find any problems with that. It could be just that little tiny spring just there. 
that wasn't allowing that, that throttle to shut right down and do its idling what it should be doing. So it was actually running on the choke side more than anything. So quickly looking here, quick little inspection. I don't think it's gonna need much at all because it was running fine, but I don't want to sell the machine on without having a quick little look because it wasn't idled down properly. Right, we'll do a quick quick and uh, quick clean on the old uh, on the bench. Just have a quick inspection, see what's going on with it, rather than coming in onto the actual workbench itself. So just want to crack that one off and crack that one off very, very quickly. There it goes. Keep the carburetor tipped up on its side. Just want to remove this little tiny bolt and the bowl should just come off in my hand. It does. Yeah, it's immaculate. So it doesn't actually need a carburetor clean at all. Okay. So I'm happy with that. What I may do is just put some carburetor cleaner down inside there. It doesn't need cleaning, but however, I just want just to inspect it because sometimes, you know, they run right for a little while, but uh, after that, um, it won't run at all. So a quick little bit of carburetor spray just straight down the head of that main jet just to make sure it is open and working as it should be. And then uh, I'll put it back together. So uh, no need for a carburetor clean here. I'll just get some carburetor spray. Um, I don't often use it, but as the O-ring has actually come off with the bowl, uh, I can afford to, so let's get a bit of carb spray. It could be just a very, very simple fix where that spring, it was screaming its head off because that throttle spring couldn't go back. Maybe that's what he was saying. So just blast some carburetor spray through there. One through there. These have got a brass seat on me, so no, no, need, to, no need to worry. That's all good. That's it, that's good enough for me. So I'm gonna put the bowl back on. Um, now it was leaking, wasn't it? So that, that could be the thing. Maybe the throttle was stuck stuck open on this machine because it wouldn't idle. Let's just check the bowl. Oh, there you go, look, see that? There you go. That's why it's leaking. So let me find um, some O-rings. Now I have some O-rings in a box just here. Let's try and find one that'll fit. Oh, I tell you something, it is not very warm down in the old mixed mower shack. I can assure you of that. Right, it could be that one there, which is the most commonly used. That's the one. We're going to fit that back on, and we want this to go round. Fuel pipe coming in that way, so I want this little tiny overflow to go just around here. So make sure you get it on fitted where it needs to be. When you screw these down, um, that O-ring will compress. And I'm not going to use my um, my D-wall. Let's use, this, use this one of these spanners. I'm not too tight because it'll snap. Okay, I'm going to go for that for now. So that will compress down. It may want a bit more tightening a bit later on, but I don't go too mad with it. So that O-ring's no good. So that's probably why it's leaking as well. It's all the little tiny jobs we have to do to get these machines to run because they always come back if you don't. So don't, don't cut no corners. If you cut a corner, it'll come back on you. Then people want their money back and you've already spent it. And that's how it starts. So just, just do it right first time is what I'm trying to say. So as I say, it looks like the only problem with this machine, and I haven't touched this machine since um, it came in from Job Lot, is literally this little tiny... Um, spring you see the little tiny leg just under that phillips screw see that little tiny leg that leg was over the other side and it does happen and this this carburetor wasn't able to uh, to come back okay so now hopefully we might have fixed that that's all it was quick little fix eh that's how we like them i know some people seem to think i get all the easy fixes but uh, generally predominantly they are all easy fixes. I need to find another bolt to go into that, into that air box because that'll also help as well with regards to a tick over. But uh, this gentleman, he was he was sort of fighting with this machine to try and get it to run right. And uh, he couldn't do it and he sold it on to me. So let's get the machine back up. Oh. Let's put you into a better, a better position. That's French, you know. I do speak French. Do you want to hear some more French? Baguette. There you go. A bit of French for you. Oh yeah, I'll mix my as multilingual. So we've got another spring up here which is in place, that's all good. And all we want to do is just fit this little tiny uber duba 
uh, goes on that way, I think. Oh, that way around me. On the choke side. That one sits into there. That one all goes into there. Like so. You'll now hook up your, your fuel pipe. These can be a little, a little bit fiddly to do. Not too bad, not compared to the Hondas. A pair of long nose pliers. A pair of uh, pliers, red handle ones, Bruce. Oh, he's a long nose. Move that old fuel light, fuel clip up. I'll get hold of it. It's going to play ball. Yeah, it is. Right, that goes onto there. And you see why I put that, that overflow screw just there? Just so uh, we can get access to it later on. That's missing a bolt there, which I need to find. Two longer bolts and the air box. That wants to go that way around. Now you've got a, a crankcase breather pipe there to go onto there. So that needs to go on as well. Okay, so don't, don't forget him. He's quite important. He is quite important. Let's get a screwdriver in there. So I can get hold of it. Little tiny long fin jobby. Just want to push that crankcase breather onto there. That's it. And then slowly Put your bolts in. There'd be one. There'd be two. And then, as I say, we want to just uh, slowly put them in just so it holds the carburetor in place. And I'll go off and find one for that there. Be a little 10 mil, a little short stubby one. But I want to put it in because it, it does help with all this control panel, keep, keeping it all, all together. See that play, see that flex you got there? That will have a factor on the tick over as well. So let me find a little bolt for that. I'll be back in two ticks. No, that's not going to interfere with nothing, that's good. It's not the right one, but it'll do. So now, do them all up. And at a moment of truth, get some petrol. And put some petrol in once I've done up. I must do that up first. That little tiny... That little tiny... Um, 10 mil just there. Nick that one up, otherwise uh, it'll just leak everywhere. Let's get a bit of fuel. Not too much. Get your forceps ready in case it absolutely gushes out the bottom. Nice bit of fuel. So we've got a leak already, I can see the leak. Let's have a little look, see where it's leaking from. And it looks like it's coming out the bottom of that bowl. So what I'm going to do, I'll get my forceps. I'm going to shut the fuel off with my forceps. So that'll stop the leak. Let's get a rag, clean that up. So first I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, um, the, main, the main jet, um, bolt off and I'm going to put a, no, a new fibre washer underneath that. Let me just get rid of his handles so I can uh, move the mower around a bit a bit more with ease. Gives me a bit more scope, that's better. Right, 10 mil. I should better do this with the mower still, still in place. Actually, nicking that up, that might actually be rounded off. Let me see. I thought that was up tight. Let's have another look, take the fuel clamps off. Has that got him? I think that's got him. Let's bring it around. I think that's got him. It wasn't quite done up tight enough. Like I said to you, because of those O-rings need to compress, it might want just a bit more nicking. Do you remember me saying that? Now, let's get a bit of blue roll, dry it off and test it. That's handy, Harry. That's the only thing I have noticed with those, uh, those O-rings. 
because they're because they're they are round, you might have to um, you might have to go in there and give it another tighten so they compress. And it is cold as well, so you know, that has a fact on the rubber. But that's had two or three seconds. So I've got a dry bit of rag. Let's put it underneath. Dab it on the on the bolt. Nothing. Bone dry. Good, good. So it's actually been fixed. So that's good then. We've got to come back to that. I will leave it just for now. And what I'll do is I'll get a fresh bit of blue rag. And I will just put that underneath said carburetor, like so, just so we can track it. Okay. It's got to have a new um, new spark plug in it. It's got to have um, uh, an all change and what have you. But what I want to do is uh, give it four or five minutes just to sit up and then uh, I'll come back and check this fuel make sure it's not dripping anymore. And then we can take it outside, give it a run. And then uh, as long as it runs okay and doesn't rev its head off and what have you, or uh, we can actually idle the machine down, then um, we can go forward and give it a bit of a service. Let's give it a run, see what happens now. So it, beforehand, it was revving its head off is what you said. I didn't see that, but it wouldn't actually idle down. The throttle control was, was obsolete. Um, so hopefully now we might have fixed it. It may be revving its head off. Let's see what happens. very very cold Right, so it's not doing anything, it's doing worse than what it was beforehand. Right, so um, now the carburetor is not leaking, something dawned on me, um, which, I, which I actually missed. Um, now this machine, although this spring uh, is ran the wrong way, I have put it back to where, to where it was originally, okay? This spring uh, would do nothing, and that's that's why it's revving it's revving high. Okay. However, with this spring in place, if I put that spring back to where it was, all the way back over there, let me hoik it over there a bit. Okay. With that now in place, <clears throat> um, lots of people would think that, that that's fixed. However, there's one piece missing. Because when this machine fires up, okay, this starts to spin, causes a vacuum inside the housing. This then opens up, okay, this, this vein opens up to regulate this spring here. There's actually nothing regulating between here and here. Okay, so there should actually be a little linkage going from there to there. Okay, and as, as this opens up, okay, so this is, this is already at that position, okay. As that opens up, it, 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 it will self-regulate. Okay, so there's actually a, 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 a call spring, a not spring, a, a, a linkage missing off of, off of here. Okay, so we need to go and find one of those. Now, I don't know if I've got one. I'll have a bit of digging about uh, in, a, in the SV box. I'd be surprised if I have got one in stock and they're very, very hard to get hold of. Um, but as that all opens up, um, that, that will regulate your, 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 your carburetor. Okay, so um, that's a bit we're missing. Right, I think I found one. I think um, it was in the bits and bobs box. I might have to take the whole carburetor off to do so to get it all on. It might go. It goes. I'll just get that to just to tweak in there a bit better. And it goes. I might just have to bend that up a touch. Now that it does seem to be working, but it wants to be cooled off just a touch more. But now you can see what I'm on about, where you get you get this reaction now to um, to this machine. So as it as it opens up, okay, as it opens up full revs, um, you can then idle it back down with, with this control here, um, and now you'll start start to see it see it all move up. So less tension on there, 
which is idle, which is no resistance. You pull it away, more tension, and it opens, opens it up. So hopefully that, that, that will fix it. Uh, but it was actually a bit missing, uh, that one just there. It is scraping just there a touch. So I may just manipulate that a touch just to bend it up a bit so it's got a bit more free movement in it. Um, just to repair long nose snippers. Or just snip a little bit off of it. Because there's nothing saying that's actually off of a Briggs. Uh, which may be a thing. So maybe if I can just get hold of that and just pull that out and just snip a little tiny piece off of that, but that there be a problem. We actually had a bit missing. I don't want to break that. I've got a spare. I've just found one, a spare vein. I want to just try, if I can, and just bend that up, just so it's got a bit more free movement. That feels a bit better. It's catching still. Let me just get, get that bent up. Just so it's not catching on the bottom of that carburetor, that's the idea. There it goes, that's better. Right. So a bit more movement there now. It seems to be catching somewhere else. Where's that catching? We should see, with a bit of force, we should see. Let's take it outside, fire it up, and see if that's made any difference now. So we had a spring ran the wrong way, and the link is actually missing. Um, and there's no way to govern this machine without without this uh, this arm being um, being moved. So hopefully we might have fixed it. Um, it looks like an SV151, I'm hoping it is. Um, it was just loose in a tray, so I, it wasn't labeled. So hopefully that'll do something anyway. So I'll put it back together, have a little look, and we'll go from there. Also here, these, these wind vanes here, they've got lots of melted plastic on them where it's been striking. So I just put some little tiny washers on top just to stop that from happening. So hopefully we might be a bit closer. Okay. So hopefully with that linkage on now and the spring in the right place, this machine will now choke, run flat out and also idle. Um, and we'll see, I say it was just nagging at me that that, that didn't make no sense why you'd have the throttle arm there with, with no, no ability to, um, to regulate. So let me just bring this pull cord up here. That's where it needs to be. So I want to choke. And I say, what after is the machine to idle down? It's, it's quite important. So on to choke. Full revs. No hunting. And idles now all the way down as it should do. That's exactly what the machine should do. And no hunt. These SV150s are renowned for hunting. how you do it right so there you have it quick little um rv150 um job lot lawnmower that came in he said it was screaming its head off but i didn't actually see that at all um what i saw was it, it running at a relatively fast rate it was a bit quicker than what it should be admittedly however it would not regulate and not throttle on down i don't know whether or not he picked it up as is or he, if he had a bit of a tinker with it not quite sure uh, but it was missing um the little tiny throttle linkage that goes on the throttle um throttle arm and also onto the weather vane, onto the, the, the vane governor. And also was the spring leg was around the wrong side of a post. So they are quite a common problem. I've come across that loads and loads of times before. So hopefully you got something out of that little video. If your um, RV150 is either hunting or revving its head off, check those first. Um, it's very important when you're doing what I do um, to keep a box of bits and bobs. I've got a box of bits and bobs absolutely everywhere. And that little tiny um, uh, carburetor governor um, linkage that was actually missing that that's the one you wanted and I actually had one or two in my in my blue cabinet up there so super super happy with that hasn't actually cost me a thing that's come off of a scrap machine in the past so hopefully you gained something out of that little video because I certainly did I like working with the old um, SV150 and RV150 engines I know the old merman don't particularly like them but I like them a lot um, they're very very cheap very very uh, affordable and you can just bang them out bish bash boss just like that and they, they sell all day long you know sort of 60 70 quid so that's plenty good enough 
So um, if this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack the bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two I'm on my Saturday night wiki live stream which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.